Scentland, the land of scent. Hello and welcome back. Chris here with another edition of Scentland Fragrance Review. And this time it's a very special review because we're going to be looking at a very special maison, a very special house, the house of Lubin, which is a great traditional French fragrance manufacturer, supplier to the aristocracy back in the early days. Um, it was founded in 1798 by um, Pierre-Francois Lubin, if I'm not mistaken, and it became quickly uh, the, the favorite brand, the favorite supplier to the European aristocracy. And then in the mid 19th century, it opened toward a tremendously promising new great market, the United States. Okay, we're talking about the mid 19th century you know, uh, the pioneers of, of the Wild West, you know, the gold rush, um, all the opportunities that were there for people to explore. And, um, and Lubin realized the, the opportunity in the market and became huge in, in the United States. Uh, and basically they were at, at the turn of the century and then heading up until the Great Depression in, in 1929, they were the, the the U.S. market was outselling the European uh, market uh, for Lubin. Um, obviously, we know that ever since actually the U.S. market is the biggest market of the world. So Lubin was doing tremendously up until the Great uh, Depression came in in 1929. And um, uh, actually, it's interesting that that Lubin in, at around 1900 had the largest fragrance factory in France. So they were really big. Obviously they, their popularity in Europe as well as the United States um, increasingly uh, had an input into you know the manufacturing and that you know ended up in, in, in Lubin having the, the biggest fragrance factory in France which is which is huge. Obviously then Second World War um, different times, difficult times. Um, towards the end of the 60s, um, there was a decline of the house. But then um, a great um, gentleman uh, uh, called Gilles Tavanin came around and saved the brand. And not only saved the brand, but elevated it up to a new level. A level. So um, today we have a tremendous selection of great, great quality fragrances um, that are available at these fantastic nice Lubin shops where you have them as individual shops for example in Paris which I visited two years ago but also in many selected uh, quality department stores and niche fragments stores all over um, Europe at least I've seen them in several places um, but it's it's a brand that does not call itself niche and it is not niche it is not niche and I want to highlight that before I present the fragrance itself. It's not niche because it took me a while until I understood what Gilles was telling me, but I totally understand now, having gone deeper and deeper in, in, into the fragrance industry, niche houses mostly, except let's say Creed and, and, and you know, brands like that, but most niche houses are making up stories, um, creating marketing fantasies in order to to bring their product onto the market. It can be great product, can be not so great product, whatever, but mostly, mostly it's about fiction, fantasy, and you know, marketing. How, uh, strange names, um, strange concepts, um, very appealing concepts behind the names. You know, it's it's a it's a it's a very interesting approach to selling fragrances. Now Lubin does not need that because Lubin has a such a great history that it doesn't really need to invent things like, you know, that are coming from, from your fantasy or from a marketing department because you just look back at the history of Lubin, both in Europe as well as the United States, and um, you can um, grab your ideas, you can get inspiration from the past of this brand in order to put it into a product, to design a product accordingly and then present it towards the market. 
and the fragrance I'm going to be presenting to you today is one like that. Ladies and gentlemen, Madame and Monsieur, grab your seats for center stage open for Lubin, Le Vativar de Lubin, Bluff. This is the fragrance uh, in its box. It's called Bluff, right? Bluff. Very nice name. Very, very nice name. And um, that is the bottle inside. And here you actually have Le Vativar de Lubin. You can see it's a bluff. It's a very nice um, cap. You can see here, you can see a very nice detail. This is a heavy glass. And uh, let me see where I have other fragrance on. Whew, the sprayer is, is fantastic. It's a 75 ml Eau de Parfum. Um, and don't be confused by the name. That's what I have to start. There is a fragrance called Le Vetiver de Lubin, which is a standalone fragrance. And then there is a fragrance called Le Vetiver, Le Vetiver de Lubin Bluff. And this is this one. Now, I'm going to invite you to um, an unboxing of this fragrance right now and right here. So, if you get this, this is, I love the fragrance enthusiasts. We love this sound, but even the, this... this um, Cellophane here is, is, is of great quality. And then you get this tremendous fragrance presented like that. I mean, come on, you know. Quality, quality, quality all over. And then you open this. And there it's sitting in there, right? Very nice fragrance. Hey, brother, I haven't seen you for a while. No, it's two of them, they're twins. Very nice, you have to Lubin logo here, very nice, not overdone, not too much, just very, very tasteful, very, very French, high quality and done in a simple, sophisticated, good taste, okay? Same goes for the fragrance inside. Now, what about the fragrance? Um, does it have vetiver? Yes, it has vetiver. In the dry down you, you find some vetiver. Um, Vetiver, Le Vetiver de Lubin Bluff is all about the, the main idea of the fragrance. And as I said before, it, it invites you back into the history of the brand itself. So the, the story behind the launch of this fragrance and the existence of this fragrance is, is taking its, its um, roots um, back in the mid 19th century in, in the United States when the pioneers of the Wild West, um, you know, being very busy with the gold rush at the time and um, everything that was going on in, the, in that part of the United States um, back in the mid 19th century, they were these very invigorating remedies that were supplied to these pioneers at the time. And uh, what do I mean? You remember maybe that when you talk about cola, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, whatever, cola, the cola nut, right? Um, when you talk about cola or Coke, um, it's always being referred to in the early days as medicine. You remember that actually Coca-Cola was sold as medicine in the chemistry's pharmacies in the 19th century uh, in the United States. It was marketed and sold as medicine. Obviously, um, and as I said, it was supplied to the, the pioneers of the, of the Wild West, you know, the, 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 that they, they were making all these, these discoveries. They discovered new opportunities, new territories. And sometimes it was very harsh. Sometimes there were, there were, there were tough fights involved. Uh, you know, some lawlessness, uh, some other uh, historical events. But it was a very rough time, obviously. And... Um, and, and um, this, uh, these invigorating remedies that then later became, became sold as medicine in the pharmacies have then turned, because obviously they tasted very good, right? They turned them into soft drinks for young folks. That's how it has, that's what it has become today. You know, we all know Coca-Cola, Pepsi-Cola, Dr. Pepper, whatever. You, all, you, all these, you have all these brands. Now, if you look back at history, that's where they came from, okay? And, and, and this fragrance takes its 
inspiration, its general inspiration from that time. And it can do so because, because it was part of that time, especially very, very popular around the Old South, St. Louis, New Orleans uh, of the United States uh, of America, uh, the Old South. It, was, it, was, it, it had um, great success among the um, uh, aristocracy of the Old South of the US, um, but it had um, a representative place in New York City as well. I love New York City. Uh, New York City, baby. Love New York motherfucking city. I'm sorry. Um, so, at the time, as I mentioned, it outsold, actually. The U.S. outsold um, uh, the, uh, the French um, part of Lubin. And um, coming back to, to Bluff, the, the, the reason why it's, you know... Uh, taking its roots and its idea of existence from those times it's because it has cola nut in there. This fragrance is, and I can read it to you from the, the uh, actual description on the box, which says, at the house of Lubin, Bluff is, is a distinguished fragrance with deceiving first impressions, crowned with lime, bergamot and, and an accord of nutmeg and cinnamon. Bluff opens as fresh, spicy and woody sensual mouth-watering hard notes of clary sage iris and cola nut are then revealed this exquisite plant rests on a foundation of cedar patchouli and sandalwood vanilla that's you know the ingredients uh it's great that it's actually being put here on the box as well um what you get overall is a very nice fresh spicy um, fragrance that is is a bit somehow dusty like if if the dusts of the of the desert of the of the wild west were still it's it has something as it has it's a it's a generalized fragrance to me it's more masculine but it has a freshness that is um, prevailing throughout the development of the fragrance and the cola nut is definitely something that sticks out there and makes it very inviting. It's not too harsh. It's not as strong and chemical and um, and artificial as in Escada's uh, magnetism. That's more a prominent current cola type of feeling that you get there. Um, this one is more um, dusty cola. You know, with with with, with these different ingredients and notes that I have that are mentioned here it's a nice fresh spicy fragrance that at the end has this vanilla dry down with the, with the vetiver actually and um, sandalwood and uh, and I think that the the uh, the initial um, cola because you smell the cola not quite early in the fragrance at least on my skin and it prevails throughout as well together with the lime you know I love lime and cola is fantastic it's just my goodness, you know. One, one other thing, longevity. Um, it is, it, it's not a pushing fragrance. It's not pushing at all. Um, it sits close to the skin, but does so for a long time. Um, obviously, if you over apply in a room, you can, you can, you can very much smell it for for the next hour or so. Uh, but what, how I use it is again, I use it underneath the shirt. Um, for me to to uh, give a constant whiff of, of freshness and, and fragrance, and um, that's that's I think very useful. The hair is somewhere where I would apply this as well, um, because it just simply lasts longer. And um, the, the the sophisticated fresh spicy fresh, freshness that's coming from this fragrance is just uh, it's just pure beauty. I would really say. Um, it is not pushy, it's there for you, uh, with you for, I'd say, maybe a half day. It depends, really depends on the, on the weather as well, uh, if it's cold or warm. Uh, and you know, um, it lives with you, definitely. It's, it's, it's a fragrance that, you know, needs to be um, discovered a little bit. So, if you go with a sample, give it time or get two or three samples in order for you to see how the performance is doing on you. Um, because I can see that some might say it has a shorter 
uh, longevity than expected from a order buffer. But I have to say, um, it really depends on how much effort and time you give this fragrance to develop. Um, because it's much more than just all about the fresh top notes, right? Although this, the fragrance does not change a lot during its development, going into the dry down, it changes a bit, but it's, it's the main accords are for me at my skin, I have to say again, staying there until the dry down. And I love that because I love the cola on this. I love Coca-Cola. I love Coca-Cola. I'm outing myself. And uh, I love the smell of this. So when I was purchasing my first sample and sitting outside a Paris cafe, um, and I was sniffing all the samples I got from Le Bain, I, I, I was drawn to this cola smell so much that I had to immediately go back and buy it, get a bottle. Um, so the entire concept for me, the smell itself, it's something that nobody else wears around here, in where I live at least. It's, it's rare. It's not a niche fragrance that everybody's talking about. It's not a niche fragrance at all because it's a piece of fragrantic history, not a simply a, yet another niche house like all the niche houses that we have around, selling good and not so good products on very high prices. Um, this, in regards to the pricing, yeah, I think it's it's adequately priced. It's nicely priced. Uh, I mean, I mean, you 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 get a tremendously high quality fragrance, and that's what you pay for it. Don't remember exactly how much it was, but I think seventy five mil we got for around ninety euro, something like that. So I think the price quality ratio is is fantastic, and you are getting a product with a history and not a faked history, a real history. Um, you're getting attention to detail both in regards to the fragrance as well as the packing, the box and everything around it. Uh, you get something special because Lubin was, is and will be a very special brand. And you get a fantastic nice, nice smell that does not smell very much like anything else. The only fragrance that has somehow a similar mood, a vibe to this is, and that's very good news what I'm saying now, is Versus Uomo by Gianni Versace in 1991. That fragrance has a part of its development that is quite similar to, to Bluff here. I think it's the actually the lime and the cola nut. Although there's no cola nut in Versus Uomo, there is a lime, permanent lime in there that mixed with some florals there somehow creates a similar vibe to Bluff. And, and I love that. I, I really, really, really love that. Um, because I love Versus Uomo and I love uh, Bluff as well. So um, I'm very happy that somehow Versus Uomo still lives on in this one because I think Versus Uomo was the best designer, men's designer fragrance ever released, full stop. Um, and that's just another great aspect in regards to, to, to this particular Luban fragrance. And there are many others I've introduced upper 10 to you, um, but there, there are many, many um, other Luban fragrances that are very much worth uh, exploring. So um, I encourage you to do so, and I encourage you to, uh, you know, take a sniff, try um, Bluff or indeed any other Luban fragrance, and uh, let me know what you think about them. Thanks very much. Merci beaucoup. Je suis très heureux, Madame et Monsieur. I'll be back with more. Thank you again for your attention. This was Chris from Scentland with Bluff from the great house of Lubin. Thanks very much. Thank you very much.